Hello there, this is Cindy Pope. I'm coming to you from the Cool Tools Studio. I'm gonna to teach you today to make a beautiful three-layer pendant using my new teardrop template set. I'm also gonna show you three very interesting metal clay techniques that will save you lots of time and effort in your metal clay work. So here's the template set. This is a teardrop template set, and there's three parts to every set. The first one is the A shape, and that's your basic shape. The next one is the B shape, and it's a faux two layer shape, and that's how these tops were made. And the next one is a fold over earring shape, and that's how these earrings and this pendant were made. And these all interact with each other. We're gonna be using these two today on this project. Okay, let's talk about the tools we're gonna to be using for this project. Um, I always have distilled water, and the lubricator I use is always olive oil. We're gonna use some sanding sponges, I love uh, stone setting and ball burrs. Now you can get a six millimeter um, stone setting burr separately on the Cool Tools website, but they do have a great set. But I also want to recommend that you get all the ball burrs because these are extremely useful in making holes in metal clay, much better than drills. I use these diamond tipped um, tweezers. They're really pointy at the end and I have two pairs and I think I need more. I have a three and a half millimeter precision hole punch. You can get a whole set, but you can also buy these individually. So for this one, I'm using a three and a half and a two. I use a mechanical pencil. I like this little chisel clay shaper. My favorite clay shaper. It comes in two sizes, so I use the small and the large. A Princeton brush, this is the best little detail brush in the world. I use a scalpel quite often in my work. I use disposable applicators. Um, I use these copper drying forms. They come in several shapes. I really like the big round one and the one inch um, ones. I'm gonna be doing some rolling, so I'm using rolling frames. And I love this big roller because when you travel, which I travel for workshops, you can put all your tools in here and then you won't lose them. And TSA won't lose them for you. I've had that happen. I'm also needing a little bit of cardstock. I like these Joyce Chen scissors. You can use regular scissors for this, but these are fa fabulous. They cut um, metal clay sheet too. I'm using my new stencil set, and this is a three-part stencil set. And this one is called the or Organic Teardrop, and I really love the shape of it. I'm gonna use this Nouveau Fouquet texture tile, so you can use any texture tile. This one is really nice for this project. I've got some little four millimeter faceted caps. I love these faceted caps. FS999. And then I use tiles. I use these little silicone containers because I make little half balls. I'm gonna show you in another video how to make them, but I use them as embellishments. And then I'm gonna use a candle warmer. And for the candle warmer, I use these little bowls to create a little oven, it's gonna make your pieces dry faster. It'll keep, make your construction a little quicker. And I think that's everything. So let's get started on designing this piece. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose the parts of the template I'm gonna use. And I like to draw it. I'm not terribly spatial, so it really helps me kind of figure out what I'm doing. So I number these, the one would be the littlest one, so it would be one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna use number four. And I'm just using a mechanical pencil. And then I'm gonna say number four. And this is the A template, so I'm gonna say 4A. And then I'm gonna have the second two layers using this template. And with this one, I, I like to have a larger border, so I'm gonna use the smallest one. So I'm gonna center it up. So this one is number one. So I'm gonna just put a little arrow out and say number one, B. So that's what my piece is gonna look like. 
Um, but there's a couple, two things I do with this. There's a masking technique, which means I'm joining this top piece onto solid clay versus texture. So that mask is going to be the same outside as 1B. Well, it just so happens I've created the templates so one of these is the exact same size. And it just happens to be number two, so it's the second biggest. So I'm going to make on my little um, sheet a drawing of that. And we're going to say number 2A. And then I'm also going to do a little technique that I used in the back here. I'm going to cut out some of the silver clay. You really don't need it in the back. So it's going to look like a thick solid piece, but I'm just going to save myself some money with clay. And for that one, I'm going to use the little tiniest um, opening. So that's number one. It's just this opening. So these ones I'm using the templates for, but this one I'm going to actually use for a mask. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And I'm going to cut right on the outside of the pencil mark because um, when you put a pencil down, it's right on the inside of the actual template. So I want it to be the same size as the template. So I'm going to use these joist chins, which cut pretty much everything. A lot of people cut a sheet with it, thin sheet, thin gauge sheet. So we're going to finish cutting this up. So what we're going to do is now that we've planned out our piece, we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll this base. So I'm going to need this template and I need to oil everything. If you don't oil your things, the clay might stick to it and that's not going to work. So I'm going to first oil my Teflon, my Teflon. You can use a Teflon sheet too. I like the silicon. I think it releases a little bit better than Teflon. And you always want to oil up your template, the one you're going to use, and we're using number four. And I actually wrote in pencil on there. You can wipe it off, but um, when you plan, a lot, most artists are a little more spatial than me, but I have to really think hard about the spatial issues in any design project. I used to make things backwards a lot. It was just a I think it must be genetic, that's all I can say. So I'm going to choose the spot where I'm going to put my piece. And for the base, you can really use any. So I'm going to give myself a little bit extra room. I'm going to turn it onto a tile to cut it, so I want a little oil on that too. And the last thing you want to oil is this nonstick roller. It hardly needs any oil because it really is pretty darn nonstick. But I do put a little bit of oil on, especially with silver clay. Okay, so now we're ready to get started. I have some clay. I've conditioned it a little bit. I like to roll my clay. Um, I like to roll my clay uh, before I use it, just to, so it rolls out a nice smooth sheet. It's kind of a habit. So I'm going to take, this is 50 grams. I'm going to take about half of this. Okay, we are going to roll five card clay for this top piece. And when I put a texture on, I roll down to four card. So what I'm going to do for the texture is we are going to put this little mask that I've oiled on the texture sheet where I want the outside border to be. And then we're going to roll it on, and then we're going to cut the outside. So I started with five, so I'm going to roll down to four to get a nice, bold texture. I do sometimes press around a little bit to make sure I got it. I turn it out onto a tile because that's what we want to cut from. Um, uh, the scalpel cuts better on a tile, and it also doesn't mar at all. Look at that beautiful texture. I just, I've fallen in love with this texture. So now I want to take my template, and I'm going to cut around the outside. So we're using number four, which is the second from the largest, and you can see that's what that border is going to look like. 
you want to be sure you're straight. Then I hold it with one hand and cut with the scalpel. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can sand the outside. You know, in metal clay, a lot of people get very stressed out when they make a mistake, but a lot of stuff is repairable. And this one, you know, you can just sand it a little bit. And I like to push that right up against these templates and you get a nice smooth cut. Okay. I'm going to pull it around. I think I might, oh, I didn't need to snip it there. So there we have a mask and I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to cut this hole in the back. I'm going to cut it out after it's dry. So to dry, I like to put it on um, this doming form. You can use spoons, or, you know, you really you can dome anything anyway, but this large round circle gives you a really lovely dome. So we're going to push that down and we're going to put it on the heating surface. Okay, now we're ready to roll the second. It actually is two, looks like two layers, but it's really one. Ready to roll that one. So we're going to oil again. I want to oil the template. I'm using the smallest one. And I've already oiled the texture. My roller is already oiled and I'm just going to oil the base here. So when we're using these two faux layers, one layer is about four cards and the other is about four cards. So I'm starting out by rolling ten cards. And then um, we'll be rolling down to these two different layers. So let's get a little bit of clay. And I always, you know, you always start with more than you need because you're starting thick with ten cards. So I'm going to make sure it's much higher than my actual rolling form. I'm going to do a little compression too since I'm going so thick. And we're going to roll both directions. This roller rolls really, really nice, smooth clay. Okay, so now I've got that ready. I'm going to go down to four. I'm going to take the texture and we're going to put the template on top of it right where I want it. And there's lots of very cool parts of this um, texture, so I change my mind all the time. Um, it's I, I like these little double swirls. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very cool texture. So we're going to go with that today. So I've placed where I want it on the design, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the clay on top. Now I only need to go up to this edge. So I'm going to place it on there, and I think I'm going to turn the tile because I'm going to roll down to four cards, and this four card fits perfectly on this stack. So I'm going to push down and just go one direction and then the other direction. And I'm pressing pretty hard because I want the clay to get all the way down in that second layer. And I do go over and just press it a little bit. Once I've got that done, I'm going to pick it up and we're going to look at it and see how it looks. And if I'm happy with it, we're going to turn it over to the tile. And I'm just kind of slowly separating it. And then I'm going to use the A template to cut out the outside. We're going to use number two. I want to make sure it's flat. And you can, you know, if you have a good eye, I don't have a really steady hand, but if you have a, if you have a steady hand, you can just cut it out. 
um, I like to use the template on the outside. Scalpels are very sharp, so be careful. We're going to go this way. There we go. So what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to put it on top of the doming form but um, a little bit, halfway in the drying, I'm gonna put it on top of that original base so they have the exact same curve. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna work with our original piece. So when, whenever you take it off the tile, you don't wanna stretch it, okay? Because we, we want it right as is, so let it fall. Then you're not gonna stretch the clay. And so now we're gonna put our second piece over here and get it centered because otherwise your dome will not be proper. And you really, these are very smooth. You really don't need to oil them. You can if you feel you want to. And I'm just not gonna mess with it at all until it's dry. And then we'll do our sanding and we'll be very precise that way. Okay, now that our piece is completely dry, let's go ahead and do some construction. Okay, so we took the paper off. I left it on a little long, and I had a little orange on here, and I, say, I um, sanded it. So take it off as soon as you can. Scalpel's a great tool for that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this little hole in that's gonna save us some clay. So we're gonna take the tiniest piece, and I'm gonna put it right in the center, and I'm gonna leave it on the curve, because I don't wanna mess up that curve but you do want to center it. So I'm drawing it, I'm making sure it's in the right place, and then I like to take um, the biopsy punches and give myself a starter hole. And then if I need to kind of go from the inside out cutting with the scalpel, um, I can cut a piece off at a time. So I'm just gonna kind of go along on the inside of the pencil mark. You don't have to get really, really close because um, the scalpel will take off a little extra edge and we're gonna do some sanding. We'll refine it but we're just trying to get ourselves a piece of clay. And this clay reconstitutes beautifully, so. And I'm not great with a scalpel on the straight edge, but we're gonna get it, cut, get it done. And here's where I'm going to break out the different parts. Because the clay is flexible, this is not going to ca cause any problem. I'm a big fan of this clay. You know, it wasn't designed as a flexible clay, but um, it's the best clay I've used in my curio machine. And I think working with it, um, because of the flexibility, it just is not brittle at all. So you're less likely to have it breaking on you during construction. Which I really like. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just use our scalpel and go right up to that pencil line. And 
And if you're pretty good with the scalpel, you don't have to do a lot of refining. I do give it a quick sanding with a sanding sponge. And this is at least, I think, around six to seven grams of clay that you've saved in this piece. If not more, the bigger that you can choose the larger one or the smaller one. And if you choose the larger one, you're, um, you're even saving more clay. And it is a little, there's a little visual interest in the back when it opens up like this. So I'm just going to, before I add the two pieces together, I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. I have already done refining all the way around. I'm going to refine it one more time. My general rule is you never add pieces together until each piece is completely uh, refined. Because once you join, it's really hard to get in the corners. And I like a little rounded edge, especially on this second layer. At this point, I'm going to look and make sure it fits in the masking space. If it were a little too large, I could um, take some more off, but it looks to me like it's fitting pretty perfectly. I also want to make sure um, the bend isn't different. Because it's flexible clay, if this, the curve on this one was not as much as the top one, you just take a little sanding and sand the back a little bit and it makes it flexible enough so you can just bend it up into place. So let's go ahead and add the stone. Once we've added the stone, we'll go ahead and um, join the whole thing together. Okay, so before we put these two together, we need to make a little spot for the stone to go. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this, but I'm going to cut it on the doming form because I don't want to put any undue pressure on the piece. I'm going to take the three and a half millimeter, and I've got some clay in there, so I'm going to take it out with my tweezers. And you want, what I do is I push it down and make sure it's in the right place. It's a little off. Kind of got to get your face right on there. Okay, there we go. And I rock it around till it cuts all the way through. There we go. So the stone is going to fit in there. But you see it doesn't go up to the top because it's domed, so I want to use that um, stone setting burr to make it a little bit thicker and open it, open it up so the, the balls, this um, half cab is going to sit right in there. And the nice thing about the, these faceted cabs is um, with a regular faceted stone, you need a lot of clay behind it because of the point. Um, you can set a really shiny faceted stone with this cab and not use as much clay. So we want to go slow because you don't want to make it so big that the stone's going to fall through. So I am every so often going in and checking it. You want it to be flush. So it's just about there, just a couple more turns. If you don't have stone setting burrs, you can bevel it with your scalpel, but I, I do think these stone setting burrs are perfect. So now it fits in there perfectly, so we're ready to do some joining. 
So this one I'm joining a little bit differently because I'm going to go backwards because I don't want the stone to fall out. So we're going to take an, a little bit of still, distilled water. We're going to use one of these applicator brushes, which is my favorite joining tool. And you have a mask that shows you exactly where you put slip, exactly where you put water. which is convenient. So I am rubbing it because I want to bring up slip off the clay. And you can see it's starting to come up. If you want to use actual slip, use really thin because you don't want anything coming up onto this textured edge. Okay, that's ready. So now we're going to go ahead and work on the back. Oh, I forgot to cut my azure hole. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to pop this guy out. We want a, a peekaboo hole to come through. So let's go ahead and use that two millimeter punch and just punch a little hole right here so you can see the stone. These are really very beautiful CZs, they're very shiny, but putting a, a hole behind really helps the light come through. Okay. It's not a big deal if you forget it, it's still gonna look pretty. I have several pieces where I didn't put it in, but I think it just adds a little something. And this is a very thick piece, so you definitely want to get it, rehydrate quite a bit of the surface. You can see all that nice slip that came up. And don't worry about the stone because we're going to clean the back before we fire. Okay, so I've got that really nicely done. I'm going to re-wet this one, which is really easy because it's already partially hydrated, but I just want it to be wet for the joining. Okay, so we're going to, oops. We're going to do this backwards. So I'm going to put it on and then flip it because I don't want the stone to come out. And then you just press it into place um, because the the clay is flexible, you're not going to break it. Um, there's a lot of clays out there where doing this pressing together would definitely cause a crack. And you move it back and forth to make sure you've got it in the right place. But the pressing it together is really, really important to make sure that first time you heat it, the clay sticks together. It's really, really important. Once I've secured it, we're going to put it on the heating surface and we're going to put our little bowl on top of it. And that's going to dry really, really quickly. And then we'll add a bale. So we've taken this off the drying surface and we've let it dry a little bit. And what you want to do at this point is you want to go through and you want to do some water reinforcing all the way around the edges. This is going to make sure it's well attached, even though we did attach it pretty well. Now what you want to do is you want to be on the edge with just the tip of that Princeton brush on the bottom clay. So 
Don't mess up your texture. This is why you need a brush kind of like this Princeton because a lot of brushes are too big to do this. So we're gonna go all the way around with that and then we're definitely gonna reinforce on the inside. This is an easy place to reinforce. So I'm actually wetting both surfaces. I'm putting a little slip in there and we're just gonna go all the way around because that'll be easy to clean up. Whenever you can reinforce from the back, do so. Okay, we're gonna let that um, dry in the air and we're gonna start working on our bale. So let's put this over here. And the bale is a, a little pinch bale that um, Hadar Jacobson came up with and I think it's very elegant. It has a look of a very elegant bale without taking away from your design. And there's a lot of design in this piece. So we really don't wanna take away from it. I am going to sand the top a little flush to get it on there. So we're just taking that point down a little bit. I think it'll make the construction a little bit easier. Wow, this new FS999 is really nice and strong in the Greenwire stage. I think a little bit easier to finish with. Okay, so I've got a flat bit and I'm gonna take some clay and you don't have to roll this clay. You wanna start pretty thick. Although we're gonna take it down to, this is probably 10 cards. And everyone looks different and I'm doing just kind of a teardrop shape, but you could really do some very interesting shapes with this. I'm thinking of doing a triangular bale on a piece I'm working on. So you wanna make it sure everything is compressed. You don't want any bends in there. I'm going to push it flat and then I'm taking the eight millimeter precision punch, one of my favorite tools. I have two sets of these just on the off chance I lose one at home and then I, I need to make something and I can't. Okay. So once I've got that done, I'm going to smush it a little bit. That rounds out the edges. I'm going to put my extra clay away. And we are not cutting a hole. What we're doing is we're attaching and shaping. The last thing we're going to do is drill using the ball burrs a hole. So I'm going to take some slip and we are going to make this top part ready to receive that wet clay. Just throwing wet clay onto dry clay is not a good way to get them to attach well. And we're gonna be adding some decorative balls, so if you mess up the texture at all, just add a ball on it. No problem at all. Okay, so then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna also dip it in the slip. You can, at this point, I kinda of want a teardrop shape, so I can shape it a little bit, but we can sand it really easily because of the clay being so strong. Then I'm gonna smush it down, and here's where we use the clay shaper. What we're doing is we make sure it's straight. That's, that's the biggest challenge for me, is getting it on there straight. So you're gonna take and you're going to smooth the clay down and smooth it onto the dry surface. You're gonna do the same thing on the sides. And in the back. So you're taking that wet clay and pulling it over the dry clay and it's gonna make it like one piece. I also go in and I smooth that a little bit. So you are not gonna fix every little imperfection at this point. Your goal is to get it attached and well attached.
because if you futz with it too much, it's going to come off. At this point, we're going to put it on the drying surface and get it totally dry. And then we're going to clean it up, shape it a little bit, and then use the ball burrs to get a hole in there. When you put it on the drying surface, make sure it's hanging up. You don't want to um, put that soft clay on a flat surface. So again, I'm using this lovely um, drying form as a little armature. All right, so our piece is completely dry. You want to make sure this is really, really dry. So we're going to do a little shaping. So I'm going to take up the most aggressive uh, sanding sponge I have, which is the fine. And I'm just going to smooth out. I like to make it slightly narrower up at the top. I think that's attractive. But if you wanted to make a square shape, um, the really you have a lot of choices at this point. We're starting with a circle, but you really have lots of choices. And I've made some that are very, very thick, and then I've narrowed them up at the top. Just depends on your project and what you think will look good. And then I do like to smooth it at this point. I like it to have a nice gentle slope going down the back. We are going to reinforce. I always recommend you water reinforce before you put it. Any, any attachments before you put it in the, in the kiln, just it needs one or two rounds of reinforcing and wetting and then redrying. So that's pretty good for a basic shape. So at this point, I'm going to start with a little ball burr to just find the center. I think it's easiest to find the center using the small ball burr. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at my ball burr set and figure out one that will give me a little bit bigger hole. And I don't make it too thin. Um, I thin it up a little bit with a scalpel. And then I also, again, use the stone setting burr, which gives it a nice slope. You'll see how it, that works. That's just a starter hole. I'm going to go through my set. Maybe one more bigger. And you can do this with a Dremel. I like the control of doing it by hand. A lot of people are doing this with a Dremel, but I just worry about that. So now I'm going to take the stone setting burr and we're start, going to start to round it up and widen it up. Try to get it the same on both sides. And you notice I'm, I'm supporting the whole thing. It's pretty strong clay, but you do want to support, um, support when, whenever you're drilling or grinding down a hole into a um, piece of greenware, you, you do want to support it pretty well. So I'm just going to go in with a scalpel at this point, widen it up. probably could have used a ball burr that was slightly bigger. And this one I got a very round shape out of. Some of mine are a little more teardrop shaped. But you need to make sure that your cord is going to fit through this. 
most clasps are probably going to fit through this on a but some chains have a really big clasp so just keep that in mind and then one of the other things I do is I'm going to take and just smooth it up on the inside so it looks really nice I'm going to reinforce on these sides just to make sure that's really well attached and in the front there's going to be a ball put right here in the front that's going to cover up any additional clay I put in there and where it's really attached is, is the best is right back here so make sure that's really nicely reinforced and smooth the more smoothing you do now, the easier it is going to be to finish. So normally I dry this and then add the balls, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you adding the balls right now so you can finish your project. So I have lots of balls made ahead of time. I'm just going to take my tweezers and pick a size. So I usually, um, I use every single size of these to create balls. So I have lots of different sizes in my container. I test them out to see how they look. And what I'm gonna do is this ball is gonna sit right up against where that attachment is and it's gonna make it a lot more secure. I'll also put one in the back. So what I do to attach a ball is I put it in water to rehydrate the surface. Then I take a little bit of water and I put it right where the ball's gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna put a little slip on there too. Sometimes I move it back and forth to really rehydrate that bottom. And you put it on and make sure it is nicely centered and never push down until you're sure where you want it. I have a hard time getting things in the center. So, so press it down for about 30 seconds and then you can put it in the drying surface. I'm also going to put one right back here. We're going to do final refining. I'm going to make sure everything looks good and then fire it away according to the FS999 instructions. So here's our final project with a beautiful ball chain from Cool Tools. Thank you so much for joining me today. I love sharing my tips and tools and techniques with you. Have fun creating. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.